Hi everyone, Port Ice Sam. Welcome to part two of our Ravel 125th Foos FD100 pickup truck. So this is the final part today. As you can see, there it is, all done. Um, it's a great kit, but there's not all that much to do. So I managed to get it all into two parts, which is quite unusual for me. Um, so we're going to start with assembling all the running gear, the engine, etc., etc. Move on to the interior, and then move on to putting it all together. So. There we go. So let's jump in and let's get started with today's video. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Okay, so back with the obligatory cutting off of parts. So we're gonna start by cutting off all the parts of the chassis, running gear, suspension, interior, get them all cleaned up and ready for primer and paint. First off, we've got a different set of wheels for this. We've got some Aoshima uh, aftermarket wheels. And I'm just checking to see the width and just a quick, well, reference to see if anything's going to need altering, which it does. We'll get to that a little later. So using a combination of our thinny sticks from Ultima and the sponges and the buffers, we're going to clean everything up. Like I say, lots of parts to clean up first. Uh, not a huge amount by most kit standards, but enough to keep us busy. We've got a few parts need gluing together, mainly the engine block and the rear differential. And the radiator is probably the three main components that get any gluing uh, together. So so using our Tamiya EMA Plasti Weld Mix, we're gonna apply a bead of glue along each part. And then there's several components need gluing in place. So just refer to instructions, have a look at what are the same colors. Some parts aren't, like the rocker covers are black, the engine is silver, uh, the exhaust will be a, an exhaust color of your choice. So keep everything off and separate. Unless you know it's gonna be the same color, then you can commit to gluing it in place. Uh, as you can see me doing here. So quite simple assembly, quite a nice engine in the kit. Um, not the best, not the worst, but quite a nice engine all around. Uh, various components put on, like the starter motor, the pulleys, auxiliary belts, etc. for the alternator and what have you. So again, just to add up what needs gluing in place, uh, what can be left and so on and so forth. Like I say, the radiator halves need gluing together. They're going to need a little bit of a sand at the end, but... Nothing major, fits together really well. It's not a very old kit, so the fit is really, really good on the kit. As you see, the rear differential also needs gluing together. So glue it, a little bit of a clamp, leave it to dry, give it a sand, and you're good to go there. So like I say, pretty basic, straightforward setup. Uh, clean up, gluing, not too difficult. Um, it's a pretty nice kit all around for a Revel kit. It is a fairly new tool, I believe it's 2017. So it's what you'd expect from a newer tool kit. Now, there's various ways of assembling this. Um, I've chose to assemble it all together because everything here is going to be black. So that's the way I've chose to do it. There's a few other parts of the glue in place as well. Again, all get painted black. We're going to paint all this in Miss Service of 1500 black. So we might as well glue them all in place and we'll paint them all at a later date. Now, to go with our new wheels, I've got some new brakes. Now, the kit brakes aren't too bad. These are some old Tamiya ones I've got. So we're going to enlarge the hole in the center so it fits over the wheel. Um, it's not pretty. Not the best way of doing it. Um, so we've got a reamer. So we're going to ream out the hole to the full size of the reamer, as you can see here. Still not quite big enough. So we're going to come with a knife. And we're just going to spin the knife around and scrape away slowly until we can get it to fit. It took a while to do. Four to do in total, two different ones front and rear. Because you're using aftermarket wheels, the standard axles, brakes, etc. don't fit. So popping a poly cap in just to fit, test fit the standard axles, they go nowhere near it at all. So a little bit of thinking outside the box, and what we're going to use is a cocktail stick. So we're going to trim them to the right length. We're going to cut off the pointy end, so we've got a thicker piece, and this will fit right into the poly cap on the wheel, like so. There we go, so that'll do perfect. A quick test fit to make sure it fits with the differential. It fits perfectly on the back. You may have to widen the front where it goes through the engine before you put the engine in. And then a little test fit on the width. We're gonna do exactly the same width. 
like so. So just mark it with the cutters, then move our metal axle and cut it. And then pop it in place. They fit in. They look fine. But the wheels are going to need trimming, as we can see here. We've got the wheels and tyres test fitted. And they're just a little bit too wide. So we know we got them to fit. So we're going to test fit the front as well, as you can see here. I've got the rear bed on. We're going to put the front cab on. A little bit of adjustment needed. So we might as well do this now before we commit to anything else. So we're going to take a bit of the width off the wheel. So we've got a Tamiya razor saw. And we're going to take off about 10 mil off the back one. Quite a bit. 8 to 10 mil maybe. So very, very sharp. Very, very useful tool, this Tatami one. It looks a bit overkill, the size of it. But it's actually really, really good. Nice and sharp, very precise. And it cuts nice and thin as well. So just making sure we're going straight through and we are absolutely perfect. So what we'll do, we'll cut through, measure it up, get it all the right width, and then we'll clean up the wheel on the back. You're not going to see the back anyway, so there's nothing really to be too worried about. And we're going to strip the chrome off later anyway. Um, and then the tyres, I've literally come in with scissors and trimmed the tyre to the edge of the rim. Now I'm doing this really first to test fit. We don't want the tyre overhanging because it fouls on the kit. Uh, and this was the easiest way I could do it. So the best way I did it was trim it roughly. When we know it all fits, I've come in and trimmed it up a lot neater. So as you can see, much better. We've got a much thinner wheel and tyre combo now. You can see the standard wheel uh, wheels there on the bench. And then offering it up on the back. And the front. We trimmed the front as well. Quite a bit more off the front than the rear. So bear that in mind. It was probably 8 to 10 mil off the front, thinking about it, to be fair. And a little less off the back. And there we go. This is how they're going to fit and the stance we're going to have. That looks really, really good. Meanwhile, we're going to have some lunch. We've got a Subway 6-inch ham and cheese with some red onion, mayo, and some lettuce. So while I demolish that, I'll have a think about the next steps. With that out of the way, um, we've got some Mr. Level and Thinner in a medicine cup. And we're going to take the paint off these old discs that we widened earlier. So the back ones are brand new. You can see the top left. These ones have got paint on. So I've literally gone over it with uh, Mr. Level and Thinner and a brush, as you can see. And just got all the old paint off. So that's how we did it. Just using an old brush, some level and thinner. As you see, it takes the paint right off. And then we're going to mount them all for paint. So as usual, my little black drill. You know the story of this if you know me. If you don't, I'm not repeating it. Uh, I'm going to put a little 0.3 mil, I think it is, hole in the back. Like so. Very gentle. And then we're going to be able to get a cocktail stick in there. Like so. To mount them for paint. And we'll get all the other parts mounted up and ready to go using a combination of holes, drilling holes, white tack, super glue, the lot. We're in the booth, we've got all the parts mounted up. We've got some Mr. Surface of 1500 black, UMK Apex 0.35, 18 psi, and we're going to put a couple of light coats down. And this is going to be the colour we're going to leave the chassis, but we're going to prime up all the other parts as well. So the engine's obviously not going to be black. So we we'll use this to prime it up. So Take your time, nice light thin coat, build it up at lots of different angles and recesses to get. So just take your time, build it up nice and slow, and after a couple of coats, as you can see, get some nice coverage off the Mr. Surfacer. Now, the downside to this paint absolutely stinks, so bear that in mind. Now, we're going to take the chrome off. I'm going to release a separate video for this. So I've always got a video to reference to show, have, stop me having to show this every time. But what we've got here is we've got some cheap, nasty, thick bleach. And over a time lapse of about two minutes, you'll see the chrome start to slowly come off. Now, this can take seconds, minutes, hours, days, or it won't come off at all. So if it doesn't come off, you'll have to try different solutions. So you might have to try some oven cleaner. I believe simple green and purple power is one you guys in America use in Canada. As you can see, cheap bleach takes it off lickety split. And as you can see, left in there for a couple of minutes longer, everything is gone. I just use some water, spray off all the excess bleach, rinse it under uh, another bit of cool, clean water, and then we'll clean it all up with a cotton ball, get rid of any moisture, any rogue bits of chrome that are still in there, and any bits of bleach to get rid of any remnants left behind. Now, we've primed the wheels in GX2 uh, Gloss Black from Mr. Hobby. Um, and then we've got some LP19 gunmetal, 0.2mm apex, 18 psi, and we're going to put down several like, coats of this lovely metallic gunmetal colour. 
A uh, few people recommend this color and I took the advice on board. And after three coats, as you can see, we've got a really, really nice color there. Top tip, put it on your airbrush or you spill your paint all over the bench, as you can see right there. Now, calipers toyed with all different colors and thought, you know what, I've got a Mr. Color color that's kind of similar to what I've got on the car. Uh, Mr. Color C77, which is a metallic green. And I thought, this will do. It's not exactly the right color, but it'll have a nice contrast. Did toy with yellow, but I thought it might have clashed against the green and red's a bit, well, everyone does red, don't they? I do red all the time. So I thought, let's go with green. So a couple of light coats um, using the brush. So the, tri the tip and trick to painting with lacquer paint is put the paint on quite thick and don't repeatedly go over it. That is my top tip for doing this. Works great this way. If you go over it repeatedly, you'll literally take all the paint off because it'll eat the lacquer paint underneath. So just, yeah, nice thin coats. Well, not nice thin coats, sorry. Nice thick coats. Um, and don't go over it too much. So you'll find it covers well. It levels pretty well. We're going on quite thick. No idea what I'm doing, but my fingernails are absolutely filthy. I'm guessing I've spilled paint all over myself. Um, but either way, we're painting up the brake calipers really well. And then the rear springs. Again, what color to do? I thought, you know what? Let's do yellow. I did talk with red and blue. Uh, and in the end, went with yellow. Just a different colour. And again, we've got some Mr. Hobby. I think it was uh, C4 yellow. And just brush it on. Nice thick coat. Don't go over it too much. And you'll be good to go. It does cover really well. I use lacquer paint all the time with the brush. Wouldn't do large areas, but for small parts like that, it works. As you can see, calipers and discs look good behind the wheels. And I was just checking to see if you could see the hub, and you can. So we're going to paint the hub in Tamiya. I think it's LP61, which is a metallic grey. Uh, we're going to brush paint this on because it's quite highly visible through the wheel. And I thought it had a bit of tonal difference between the disc and the wheel. So there we go. Same principle as before. Put it on quite thick. I don't mean thick that you flood the area, but thick enough that you're not having to repeatedly go over the same part all the time. Decals, several decals today. We've got a couple on the engine um, cam covers. Uh, we've got a couple on the end of the engine. We've got some on the brake discs as well. I didn't use the Foose ones on the brake calipers. I used some Brembo ones I had separately. Um, I thought the Brembo would look better. Uh, yeah, I think they did, to be honest. So pop them on the usual manner. Hit them with some Ultimate uh, Strong decal solution. And they're good to go. We've got some decals on the center of the tires as well, which are on here. And we're going to use some, let me see, Vallejo Model uh, Silver to paint our road wheel nuts, lug nuts, wherever you want to call them. Uh, just put them on a cotton cocktail stick and touch it, and that will give the impression of silver wheel nuts. Now we've got our auxiliary drive belts. Uh, these have been painted in the surface of black, and I'm just going to detail paint some of the pulleys. Probably not correct for the vehicle. Some of these are going to be black, etc., etc., but... I just did it because, well, my model, I can do what I want, and I chose to do them silver. So, a bit of neat painting. If you do mess up a little bit, uh, water-based over lacquer, you can wipe it back off. And same with the fans as well. We're going to hand paint these in Vallejo model colour black, thinned with a drop of water, uh, just one nice light coat. If you need another, let it dry, repeat it. But I tend to, find, tend to find it does cover really, really well. So like I say, paint goes down really well. I do I'm a big fan of the model colours? They do work really well. Um, nice thin coat, and you'll be uh, you'll be just fine. So the engine block comes with um, pre-marked holes for the HD lead spark plugs, whatever you want to call it. Um, so using my little battery powered drill, I'm just going to open these right up, and that way we can get our HT leads in there as well. So nice and simple to do. Pre-marked for us makes life a little bit easier. No, my luck. Somebody will come and tell me now. Put them in the wrong place, but I'm pretty sure that's what these holes are for. Now, the distributor that comes with the kit isn't the best. I've got some of these resin 3D printer ones. I got off Luke from Scale Motor. So if you go and visit Luke, Luke Ward, Scale Motor on Etsy, uh, you can buy these. They're really good quality, and Luke does a fantastic job making these. Um, we'll pop our cam cover on. I call them cam covers, rocker cover. I don't know what everybody else out there will call them, but they're CA glued in place like so. Nice and simple. We've got our air cleaner on the top of our carb. 
And we're going to pop in place our auxiliary belts, alternator, etc, etc. I'm assuming it's the water pump and everything there. Some drops of Loctite CA glue. So it can only go on one way this, so just line it up, push it into its holes. We will, we'll give all this a wash later on and get it all looking a bit better. Now I need to widen the hole on the block for the standard distributor because the resin one's a little bit bigger. As you can see, it's in place, glued in. And now we can get some wire and wire up our HT lead. So I've got some thin red wire. I'm just gonna dab it in say glue, pop it in a hole and then trim it to a bit longer than we need, quite a bit longer. I always do a bit more than you think. Um, do the second one and then I'll come back and show them all done. I'm not gonna sit here and do all eight because that'd be a little bit boring for you to watch. And there we go, there's all eight done. So now we're going to offer them up to the distributor, see how much you need to trim it off, and then bend them and glue them in place. So we're just going to snip off a little bit. And we'll bend the very end of the wire. Make sure it reaches still. Perfect. Then we get a little dab of CA glue and glue it in place. And then we'll repeat that for all eight. Like so. It looks an intimidating job. It's actually pretty easy to do. Just go around, go through, get them all in place. Um, once you're happy, um, you can bunch them all together where they should be. And get them looking nice and neat. So just take your time. Don't get seagull everywhere. Don't undo all your hard work. Take your time. Just some careful movement. And there we go. And there we go. There's all eight in place. The red HT leads looking good. Engine's looking good. Look even better after a wash. And then we've got our exhaust manifolds or headers, depending on what you call them, where you're from. So again, a couple of dabs of Loctite uh, Craft. What is it called? I keep forgetting. It is creative. Super glue creative now. Not a um, perfect pen. So we glue our headers in manifolds in place two locating points on each nice and positive there we go and then we can glue our engine on the chassis now one important thing i did forget but look i could still move it was to put the drive shaft or prop shaft as we call them over here in place so that needs to go between the engine and the differential on the back so depending on how you assemble the model with the dictate as and when you put that in place. So there you go, I forgot. I was like, oops. So I just lifted the engine up before the glue fully set, popped it in place, pushed it back down, and there we go. It's held it in place really well. And our exhaust system as well, pipe and back box. There we go. A couple of dabs of CA glue. Then you have to hook it underneath the chassis, like so. And there we go, locate it on the header and then push it in place on the chassis as well. There we go. Push it in quite well, nice and positive. And then we've got a little bit of a CA glue kicker. And just ensure these are all glued in place because we don't want them falling off. And there we go. On the back, we've got our rear suspension, uh, shock absorber and spring. We glue the left hand one in place and just a couple of dabs of CA glue and drop in the part repeatedly. We can try and get it glued in place. And there we go. Nice and simple. Like I say, all the parts are caked really well. It's quite a really good fitting kit. Um, we've got some Tamiya black panel liner here. I've thinned it a little bit with some Sansador from Windsor Newton, which is an odorless mineral spirit. I'm just going to give all the metallic parts a quick wash. So make sure we get all the grooves of the groove brakes. So these brakes are a little bit larger than the kit ones. They're grooved as well. They've got much nicer calipers, so they are going to look good. Like I said, we're going to give all the metallic parts of the engine, the radiator, everything, as we can see here, a wash. We'll let that dry, and we'll wipe off all the excess wash, leaving behind a bit more depth to the metal work. Adding a wash is a very worthy uh, addition to your build. makes a real big difference. Um, well worth doing. As you can see, we just add a wash. It brings out a bit of definition and a little bit of depth in all the parts. You can see it there. It just brings the parts to life. I'm just going to go around everywhere on all the metallic parts of the engine. If it will hold a wash, 
We're going to add a wash and we'll come back later and wipe off any excess that we need to. On to the interior. Now, I did toy with many things on the interior, but it was a suggestion of my girlfriend Hannah, my partner Hannah, said do it in a nice tan leather colour. So that's what we did. So we're going to cut all the parts off and get them all cleaned up, ready for primer. Going to prime them in grey and then paint them in Tamiya tan uh, leather colour. Now, contemplate what to do here. I decided to flock the carpet. I'll show you that in a little bit. I didn't do it. Hannah did it for me again. Um, but we primed in Tamiya light grey primer. And we're going to put down two or three, probably three light coats of this nice tan leather colour. Now, I did look at the interior, think should I go all out and do all this? But when I looked at it in the chassis, you can't really see all that much of it through the window. You can see a bit of it, but not too much to think, oh, wow, I should do that. I should do this. So I kept it really simple. And as you can see, after three coats of the tan leather, we've got a beautiful tan leather colour. Now, I didn't have a wash that would complement this, so I didn't bother putting a wash in there. Um, and we're just going to leave all that to dry. So the bodywork, we've got some 2,500, 2,500 grit wet and dry. This is what I've been using lately. Um, wet, I'm just going to go through and try and remove all those dust marks we can. Now, I'm not one to strive for absolute perfection. I would rather save ruining a model by burning through the paint for the sake of completely removing a dust speck, but we'll do our very best to make it look as good as possible. Um, without pushing it too far and burning through the paint, which is very, very easily done. So as you can see, we've got nice wet, wet and dry. We've got a clean bit of kitchen paper. I'm just going to wipe it off as we go and check our progress, see how it looks. And if it needs more, we'll wet it again. Keep the wet and dry nice and wet. We're not applying a huge amount of pressure, um, but we're just going to go over it until we're happy it's sanded. Once we're happy, we've got rid of it as much as we can with the sandpaper. We're coming with the ultimate um polish system so this is the compound now on a nice clean cotton cloth and um, we're just going to completely buff this back up to a much nicer higher shine finish or remove all those micro scratches left behind by the sandpaper once we're happy we can let it haze off and then buff it off and as you can see we've got a real nice shine already so looking a lot better really is so we've got rid of the dust spots to a degree. They're still there. If you catch the light, you can see them. And we're going to repeat that on the rest of the body uh, until we're happy it's gone. And then we'll come in, as we can see here, uh, with the compound again. And then once we're happy, we can come with the polish and give it a good polish up as well. So use all the system in one. Once we're done, use a two, old toothbrush to get rid of any collected polish and compound. Um, and then we're ready for... Um, some painting. So what I've done here is, is what, something I wanted to do was do the side steps in chrome. Now I did very quickly try burn metal foil. There was no way that was working. It just kept ripping. So I thought, right, we'll mask it up and we'll paint it. Went through my spoons. The best chrome I thought other than Molotow was AK Extreme. Now AK Extreme's an enamel. It takes a while to dry. If you overhandle it, it comes off. And it's a reason I stopped using it. And later on, I'll remember why I stopped using it. So, a few coats of the AK Extreme Chrome. And there is our side steps painted. 0.2 mil Apex, 18 PSI. It's an enamel, so you don't need to be too careful with it. It does actually quite like to go on a little bit thicker. Obviously, you don't want it to run, so be careful doing that. Uh, but just build it up. And it does leave behind a nice chrome finish, especially because we 2K'd the uh, body shell. So, it's nice and smooth already. So, it gives a good finish. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good as well. So a little bit of tricky masking. We use uh, cling film to mask the rest of it up. But there we go. Looking good. Not too bad at all. But I could say in a little bit, I'll remember why I don't use the AK Chrome because it does come off really, really easy and we'll have to do a touch up. So headlights, nice and simple to do. We kept the factory Chrome, the kick Chrome. And the headlights just sit in place. A little bit of UV glue in place. Glues them in place. Nice and simple. Easy. Mess free. Does a really good job. Big fan of this UV glue. It works absolutely fantastic. And like I say, just a couple of dabs here and there. And then pop in our clear part. Like so. 
Make sure it's all lined up, then hit it with the UV side of the pen. Give it 10 to 15 seconds. It's supposed to be five, but it takes a little bit longer to fully cure. And it has more than adequate bonds to hold parts like these in place. And if you get a little bit of excess, come in with a clean cocktail stick and you can just wipe off any excess like so. Front bumper, well, the front grill it is. It's a weird grill, it's not actually a grill, it's more of a headlight surround, I suppose, but I suppose it is the grill essentially. Cup of Dapsa Lock Type glue, say glue, and we'll pop that in place, put it to one side to fully cure and dry. And then we've got our rear lights, a little bit of UV glue in there as well. Push them in place, hit them with the UV uh, pen. And again, we're good to go with that as well. Again, 10 to 15 seconds with the UV lamp is more than adequate to cure this. Um, and again, it's great for holding small parts like this that aren't really structural or strong or are going to fall out on us, but it does work really well. I left it in the full amount of time I leave it there, um, just so you can see for yourself. So it does say five seconds, but it definitely does benefit from being held just a little bit longer. Actually looks like I'm frozen, but I'm not. I'm just holding it really, really still. And like I say, move on to the other part and repeat. So don't worry about putting it on too long. It's better to leave on too long than too short. So we're going to put our bed on the back. So there's about six locating points. So there's two either side of the bed step. Sorry, there's eight locating points. Two at the back, two at the front. Oh, the front sorry. Four at the back, four at the front. There we go. We get it right in the end. So a couple of dabs of CA glue. Turn it upside down. And then pop it on. Locate all the parts. Make sure they're all located. So there's two just in front of the bed. There's one at the back. And then the side steps have got two each side. And then once that's glued in place, we can put our rear bumper on. So again, a couple of dabs of CA glue. Make sure you've got the bumper the right way around. Now, of all the parts, this is probably the one I kind of wished if I'd known it was going to sit like this because you can just see um, where the parts are cut off the sprue. I cleaned them up and painted them with, well, touched them up with a Molotov pen, but you can still see if you look closely where it's been. So, in hindsight, this is one part I kind of wish I had stripped, but it's good in place now and uh, job done. So simple. Clear parts, really nice clear parts in these, so take care of them. Um, cut them off the sprue, clean them up nice and gentle, give them a wipe with an old glasses cloth if you need to clean them, um, because these are very, very clean parts for Rebel Kits. Now, another thing I wish I'd done is painted the interior roof um, here. I didn't do it at this point. I did it later on. I had to very carefully paint around the window, but in hindsight, it also gave me the nice frame around the bare metal foil, so not too bad. Now, this was supposed to be a test fit, but the rear window actually clips in place, so I just put it in, left it be. Front window is not so lucky. It fits in very positively, so I popped it in place, hit it with the UV pen, and like I say, we'll paint the interior, the roof, and the B pillars, A pillars, uh, in some Vallejo black later on. So again, hit it with UV glue. For clear parts like this, this is what I love using this glue for. It's so less messy than super glue. It's not as permanent. You can get it back off should you wish. It works really, really well. Um, it's just super simple to use. Okay, now the rear bed. I have a piece of 3M backed wood veneer. I've stained it with some Danish oil, which I did in the house. And all I did was got some Danish wood oil, uh, put one coat over with my finger, and it darkened up absolutely beautiful. Um, I think if you go back to part one that I cut this, I think you go back and you'll see the original colour, and you can see it's darked up quite a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off all the metal strips off the decal and attempt to use them on this. Now, in hindsight, looking at it now, it doesn't look too bad, but this is one of the kit that could definitely do with improving. I kind of wish I hadn't put them in now, um, but I couldn't think of any other option that would work. So... Yeah, they're in. They don't look the best. I got them a lot straighter than they are here. They're a bit lumpy, but I got them all settled down. But yeah, the wood looks great. I just couldn't have a better option for um, putting the, <laughs> the uh, strips on. But hey, it is what it is. This is what I've got. This is how I chose to do it. And uh, yes, it could be worse. It could be better. Um, all I want to do is focus on getting rid of all those lumps, which I do. We get it all nice and flat. Uh, but yeah, not the best option. But yeah the best option i could think at the time 
Right then, so with those on, uh, we put the rear license plate on, number plate as well. So pop it in place like normal, hit it with some ultimate strong to get it set in place, like so. And there we go, it moves, so yeah, be careful doing the decals. You've really got to take your time. But once you've got it in place, get rid of all the excess moisture and then hit it up with some decal solution of your choice. I like our ultimate decal solution. I think it's the best you can get, to be honest, but I am quite biased. Um, three different strengths. It sets all decals easily. So the interior, we just put together. You can see the flock floor now that Hannah did for me very kindly uh, using some beige colored enamel and the beige colored flocking I've got from Scale Motorsport. No, it's not. It's scale production. And as you can see, our flock floor looks really good against the tan leather. Like I said, I did think of different things to do. I was going to put a wash in, but I didn't have any colour to go against the tan. So I didn't really think what to do here. Uh, so I decided just to leave it as is. It looks good when you look through the window. Probably could have been a bit better, but it is what it is. And then we've got our dashboard in place, steering wheel. I'm just painting the centre um, columns, well, the arms of the steering wheel in Molotow Chrome. And there we go. That'll do us for the interior. And then we're going to glue this to the chassis as per the instructions. Like so. Good, generous helping of this. Two locating points on those side steps we painted chrome earlier. Like so, and just let it sit and set of its own accord. And now, sadly, one point I forgot to click record on the camera was putting the cab on. So it literally fits over the top, slides over the front where I'm gluing there for the front bumper, um, pushes down, and that's it really. You may find it needs a bit of trimming on some parts, um, but mine, yeah, just need a little bit of trimming on the bottom. Other than that, it was okay. But as you can see here, the enamel uh, AK Extreme's worn away where my fingers have been. So I've got some Molotro Chrome on the pen and touching it up, it looks absolutely flawless. Really can't beat these Molotow pens. So uh, we'll just spin it round and touch up the other side as well. So, yeah, this is why I stopped using the AK Extremes. Um, they let me down. You, you put parts together and you take paint off. It takes forever to fully dry. It is enamel at the end of the day, which does take a lot longer to fully dry or cure. Um, so, yes, as long as you're not going to touch it, the Molotow Chrome will do just fine. So that's what I touch it up with. And there we go. Quick check on the stance. It's looking good. The wheels look good. Brakes look good. Colour looks good. There's areas that improve on it. That bed is one of the worst ones. I like the wood. I just don't like those um, pieces I put in between off the decal sheet. But overall, it's looking good. Not looking too bad at all. Making sure everything's straight. Everything's still glued in place. There's our engine. I've left the hood hinges off. Uh, my hood on it is a really good fit. Just holds itself in place beautifully, like so. And then before we take some pictures, we've got some Ultimate uh, Detail Spray. It's part of our Ultimate Polish system. So it's basically a very, very high-quality spray wax. Detail and spray. So spray it on your cloth. You don't need a huge amount. One spray will do the entire car. So just wipe it on, let it buff off. Uh, sorry, let it haze up and then buff it off. Nice and simple, quick and easy to do. You can use the wax should you wish, but this is my favourite one. I like using the spray. It works really well. Don't spray it on the model. It'll go absolutely everywhere you don't want it. Um, but yeah, pop it on, let it haze up, buff it off, and you'll have a nice high shine. Obviously, be careful of other parts you've glued in place or any delicate paintwork. Uh, just take your time here and uh, yeah, go around the model. Like I say, once it's dried to a nice haze, buff it off and you're left with a nice high shine. Use on the clear part as well. Uh, just take your time. Don't be going mad with the cloth because you end up ripping off parts that you don't want to be ripping off. But happy how this has turned out. It's not too bad at all. Um, we'll have a little few pictures up in a minute and a quick recap of what we've done. Um, but yeah, it was a good build, this one. Didn't go bad together too bad. Um, no real fit issues at all. A uh, couple of regrets. The bed, I'm not happy with those strips. I think I'd like to replace those at some point. Um, yeah, I think I would. That's probably the only part that let me down a little bit. Um, and there's some nasty marks on the back of the bed on the side. Everyone's kit seems to have it. Everyone's mentioned that it's there. 
Um, but it is what it is. It's one of those. You're not going to be able to get rid of those easily by sanding because you can't really get in there. But I'm happy with this. It looks really good. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I picked this color as well. Really nice color. And I think it really suits the truck. So then the Ravel 125th Foos FD100 pickup truck. Great kit. Went together. No real problems. Primed in uh, Tamiya Grey Primer. Painted in Gravity Color Spain, Neptune Green, Chevy Neptune Green. Uh, Gravity to Spain 2K Clear, went down great. We burn metal foiled the rear windows. We left the kick chrome on the bumpers. We did some AK Extreme Chrome on the side steps. Uh, we replaced the standard wheels with some Aoshima 20 inch uh, Rays 57 GTs, I think we were. We added some Tamiya brake discs to make them a little bit bigger, look a little bit better. Painted interior in tan zero paint, and we added a wood veneer, real wood veneer bed in the back. Like I say, not really happy with those strips on the bed. Something maybe we'll fix at a later date, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, we flattered the paintwork and polished it all for the ultimate polish system. And yeah, I'm happy with this. Part of the Foos Christmas buddy build I started. Doesn't officially start till um, the 1st of December, but I bumped the date up selfishly for myself um and yeah so a few people probably haven't started this yet uh but a few people have already finished so it is what it is it's one of those um but yeah happy with the build great kit and we're going to see loads and loads of these over the next month being built on ism so there we are let's go back to me for some final thoughts okay there we go that's it all done happy how it's turned out like i said not happy with that bed, but it is what it is. I'll maybe look at something at a later date. I bought not all the kit, so maybe I'll just redo it and do it a different way, different colour. Don't know, we'll see. We'll play. We'll see how it pans out in the future. But for now, that's done. As I said, that's finished for my Foos uh, Christmas pickup build, buddy build, uh, which doesn't officially start till the 1st, but I started early, like I said, because uh, I'm selfish like that, really. Um, no, I had commitments, so I moved it along a little bit. Uh, a lot of people have um, started so we've already finished so it's good to see the eagerness there of people um, i've seen a few of them done and they look absolutely spectacular and we're going to see a lot of these built like i just said over the next month ism is going to be inundated with them and uh, dan's section of the show is going to be foos orientated for sure so yes um, great kit goes together well cheap 21 pounds absolutely cheap kit fairly new tool no real issues with the kit and a very interesting, good looking subject as well, which is open to a lot of customization. Um, I don't know what you want to do. So, there we go, another video done. I'm going to do a bench update over the next couple of days and then we're going to come back with our next build. We've got the Lamborghini to finish off as well. And yes, the P51's still there when we feel like coming back to it. I've got loads of other builds planned for the new year and next year. So, yeah, stick with us and let's see what we. Uh, we pull out the hat, that's for sure. But the McLaren MP45B is being started very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. That's a video build. It's a commission build as well for a very good friend of mine. Uh, and it's going to be my very, very first F1 car. So steep learning curve. And it's going to be interesting. So there we are. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon me link in the description down below, a PayPal me link, and buy me a coffee link as well. The patrons got loads of different tiers and perks and benefits for being a member. And you're safe in the knowledge knowing that all your donations go towards keeping these videos going uh, and all the content I put out. Check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We get a lot of products I use in my videos. My Paul ISM Facebook page where all my personal modern work is shared. And of course, check out the ISM Live the Bench page, Offer Hangout page and the GB page as well. And check out my Paul ISM Live on the Bench page where all my daily hangouts are posted. Links are all in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give a better thumbs up or a thumbs down. Hit the bell notification to get notified of our latest videos. And please leave a comment. I do appreciate and love all the comments you guys and girls leave me. Um, and thank you for watching today. There we are. Um, enjoy the rest of your night or your day, whatever time it is, wherever you are. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.